I am Milay Kumar, working as an assistant professor, Department of Physics. In this session, I am going to explain the concept of Zeeman effect. So first, you see the statement for Zeeman effect. So what is mean by Zeeman effect? It is a magneto-optical phenomenon, which means if a source of light producing line spectrum is placed in a magnetic field, what happens? The spectral lines are observed those spectral lines are splits up into components. So we can classify the Zeeman effect into two forms, normal Zeeman effect and anomalous Zeeman effect. So there is a slight difference between those normal Zeeman effect and anomalous Zeeman effect. So what is mean by normal Zeeman effect? The splitting of spectral lines into two or three components or two or three lines it is called normal Zeeman effect and it can be easily explained quantitatively by using the classical theory when the splitting occurs into two or three lines and it can be explained quantitatively by classical theory so what is mean by anomalous Zeeman effect? The splitting occurs into more than three components in ordinary big magnetic fields is called anomalous Zeeman effect. And one more difference between normal Zeeman effect and anomalous Zeeman effect is this cannot be explained by classical theory where normal Zeeman effect could be explained by classical theory but anomalous Zeeman effect it cannot be explained by classical theory this is the basic difference between normal Zeeman effect and anomalous Zeeman effect experimental arrangement for the normal Zeeman effect so this is the experimental arrangement diagram for the normal Zeeman effect. So in this instrument, here we having a letter denoted by capital M M. It is a electromagnet which is used to produce a very strong magnetic field. So with the help of electromagnet, we can be able to produce a very strong magnetic field. Then there is a letter mentioned in the diagram PP. It is a conical shaped pole pieces have longitudinal holes drilled through them. Then there is a L source of light which gives the line spectrum. So from the source of light, we get a line spectrum. So it is emitting a line spectrum. Say so it is a sodium vapor lamp which is placed between the pole pieces PP. So there is a S which is mentioned in the diagram. It looks like a high resolving power spectrograph. The spectral lines are observed with the help of this spectrograph which is a high resolving power. The Zeeman effect may be observed into two ways. First one is normal longitudinal Zeeman effect and second one is transverse Zeeman effect. That is a normal transverse Zeeman effect. So first case, normal longitudinal Zeeman effect means. So here the diagram. The spectral lines is viewed longitudinally through the hole drilled in the pole pieces. 
so that the split into two components one slightly shorter in wavelength and the other slightly longer wavelength the original line is not present in the normal longitudinal zeeman effect from the diagram we can easily able to visualize that is no original line is present in the longitudinal view on either side of the original view we have the two lines that is split into two components the one which is shorter in wavelength and the other which is slightly longer wavelength then with the help of nikol prism we can able to analyze the whether it is a circularly polarized or plane polarized in some what direction so from that nikol prism those two lines or two components are looks like a circularly polarized lines but in opposite direction normal transverse zeeman effect so there is a little bit difference between those normal longitudinal zeeman effect and the normal transverse zeeman effect you look at the diagram for transverse we have a original line the wavelength of the third component which almost looks like the wavelength of original line that is the spectral line is viewed transversely but perpendicular to the direction of a magnetic field the splits may be into three components the central line has the same wavelength as the original line with the help of uh, my nickel prism we can able to detect that polarized is plane in nature that is plane polarized nature we can easily observed with the help of nickel prism it is a plane polarized nature so that is the difference between the normal longitudinal zeeman effect and the normal transverse zeeman effect next theory so in this lorentz classical theory the frequency of the spectral line is given by the frequency of vibration of the electron in an atom so the spectral line frequency purely depends upon the vibration of the electron in an atom for the charge in the direction of the field along the field linear motion along the field is not affected so there is no mechanical force acts for the charge along the direction of the field in linear motion the other two circular components are affected by the magnetic field one being retarded and other being accelerated so what is mean by longitudinal wave for longitudinal wave no light waves are observed due to the unaltered linear component so for the longitudinal wave we cannot be able to find the light waves and also original line is not observed in the longitudinal wave two altered circular components which are perpendicular to the field produces circularly polarized light waves so in longitudinal wave can able to visualize the uh, plane or circularly polarized light waves are observed so instead of plane we can able to find the circularly polarized light waves are observed in the longitudinal view so what about transverse view the central line of the triplet have same position as the original line since it has the wavelength as same as the original line due to unaffected linear component so it comes under the plane polarized 
what about the other two circular vibrations the other two circular vibrations are appeared as also plane polarized nature so for longitudinal wave we can get the circularly polarized light for transverse wave we get the plane polarized nature for longitudinal wave we cannot get the original line but for transverse wave the central line of triplet will act as the original line for light tunnel we cannot get the light waves but for transverse wave we get the light waves that is the difference between the longitudinal wave and the transverse wave so there is a expression for the zeeman shift you have to find out the expression for the zeeman shift denoted by del lambda so here you look at the diagram there is a charge moves around in the circular motion the application of magnetic field induction consider an electron in an atom moving in a circular orbit of radius small r with a linear velocity b and angular velocity omega so here we consider an electron which moves around a in circular orbit of radius r so with uh, linear velocity b and angular velocity omega so there is a force will act on the electron named as centripetal force so first you write the centripetal force on the electron but in the absence of the magnetic field is given by f equal to m b square by r which is equal to m into omega square r put us equation number 1 since linear velocity b equal to omega into r here the b which denotes the magnetic field intensity which is applied perpendicular to the plane of orbits of two circular components then an additional radial force on magnitude beb which acts on the electron so there is a two form of motion for the charge e clockwise motion and the anti clockwise motion what happens the direction of force for clockwise motion the direction of force will acts outwards in anti clockwise motion the direction of force acts inwards so that is the difference between clockwise motion and the anti clockwise motion so larmer precision is nothing but a complex motion of the electron due to an additional radial force so once the additional radial force acts on the electron so we called as larmer precision it produces a change in the angular velocity without any change in the form of the orbital the larmer position it start to produce a change in the angular velocity without any change in the form of the orbital so here del omega is a change in angular velocity caused by the field so once we apply the magnetic field b on the moving charge of electron so there is a change in angular velocity so for clockwise direction the additional radial force is directed away from the center so therefore f minus bev equal to m into omega plus del omega of square into r put us equation 2 and further simplified those equation 2 we get m omega square r minus m into omega plus del omega of square r equal to b e omega r so we get minus 2 m r omega del omega equal to b e omega r so here we neglect the del omega square then we get del omega equal to minus b e by 2 m put us equation number 3 so for anti clockwise direction the additional radial force is directed 
towards the center so for clockwise directed away from the center but for clockwise the radial force is directed towards the center so we write the equation as f plus b e b equal to m into omega plus del omega of square or so del omega equal to plus b e by 2m equation number 4 now you combine those equation 3 and 4 we get del omega equal to plus or minus b e by 2 m equation number 5 then we know the new as the frequency of vibration of the electron you know the basic relation between the angular velocity and the frequency which gives omega equal to 2 pi nu for the change in angular velocity we write del omega equal to 2 pi del b from that we find del b equal to del omega by 2 pi so the change in the frequency of the spectral line change in the frequency of the spectral line is given by del b equal to plus or minus b e by 4 pi m equation number 6 if v and lambda are the frequency and wavelength of the original line if nu and lambda are the frequency and wavelength of the original line so there is a relation between frequency velocity lambda or nu equal to c by lambda so or del b or del nu equal to minus c by lambda square into del lambda thus the zeeman shift from this we have to find out the zeeman shift del lambda equal to plus or minus del lambda equal to plus or minus b e lambda square divided by 4 pi m c so this is the final expression for the zeeman shift so dear students in this session we saw the concept of zeeman effect and experimental arrangement of the normal Zeeman effect then according to Lawrence about the normal Zeeman effect then finally we can find out the expression for the Zeeman shift Thank you. students